Last night I had a dream about gradient boost and it was crazy. I was using it to classify things and my memory is clear and not hazy. Stat Quest. Hello, I'm Josh Starmer and welcome to Stat Quest. Today we're going to do part three in our series on gradient boost. This time we'll focus on the main ideas of how gradient boost can be used for classification. Note, this stat quest assumes you have already watched Gradient Boost Part 1, Regression Main Ideas. If not, check out the quest. In addition, when Gradient Boost is used for classification, it has a lot in common with logistic regression. So if you're not already familiar with logistic regression, check out the quests. In this stat quest, we will use this training data, where we have collected popcorn preference from six people, their age, their favorite color, and whether or not they love the movie Troll 2, and walk through, step by step, the most common way that Gradient Boost fits a model to this training data. Just like in part one of this series, we start with a leaf that represents an initial prediction for every individual. When we use Gradient Boost for classification, the initial prediction for every individual is the log of the odds. I like to think of the log of the odds as the logistic regression equivalent of the average. So let's calculate the overall log of the odds that someone loves Troll 2. Since four people in the training dataset love Troll 2, and two people do not, then the log of the odds that someone loves Troll 2 is the log of 4 divided by 2, which equals 0.7 which we will put into our initial leaf. So this is the initial prediction. How do we use it for classification? Just like with logistic regression, the easiest way to use the log of the odds for classification is to convert it to a probability. And we do that with the logistic function. The probability of loving troll two equals e to the log odds divided by 1 plus e to the log odds. So we plug in the log of the odds into the logistic function. Do the math, and we get 0.7 as the probability of loving troll 2. And let's save that up here for now. Note, these two numbers, the log of 4 divided by 2 and the probability, are the same only because I'm rounding. If I allowed four digits past the decimal place, then the log of 4 divided by 2 would equal 0.6931, and the probability would equal 0.6667. Since the probability of loving Troll 2 is greater than 0.5, we can classify everyone in the training dataset as someone who loves Troll 2. Note, while 0.5 is a very common threshold for making classification decisions based on probability, we could have just as easily used a different value. For more details, check out the stat quest, ROC and AUC, clearly explained. Now, classifying everyone in the training dataset as someone who loves Troll 2 is pretty lame, because two of the people do not love the movie. We can measure how bad the initial prediction is by calculating pseudo-residuals, the difference between the observed and the predicted values. Although the math is easy, I think it's easier to grasp what's going on if we draw the residuals on a graph. The y-axis is the probability of loving Troll 2. The predicted probability of loving Troll 2 is 0.7. The red dots, with the probability of loving Troll 2 equal to zero, represent the two people that do not love Troll 2. And the blue dots, with the probability of loving Troll 2 equal to one, represent the four people that love Troll 2. In other words, the red and blue dots are the observed values. And the dotted line is the predicted value. So, for this sample, we plug in 1 for the observed value and 0.7 for the predicted value, and we get 0.3. And we save the residual in a new column. 
Then we calculate the rest of the residuals. Hooray! We've calculated the residuals for the leaf's initial prediction. Now we build a tree using likes popcorn, age, and favorite color to predict the residuals. And here's the tree. Note, just like when we used gradient boost for regression, we are limiting the number of leaves that we will allow in the tree. In this simple example, we are limiting the number of leaves to three. In practice, people often set the maximum number of leaves to be between eight and 32. Now let's calculate the output values for the leaves. Note, these three rows of data go to the same leaf. These two rows of data go to the same leaf. Lastly, this row of data goes to its own leaf. When we used gradient boost for regression, a leaf with a single residual had an output value equal to that residual. In contrast, when we use gradient boost for classification, the situation is a little more complex. This is because the predictions are in terms of the log of the odds. And this leaf is derived from a probability. So we can't just add them together and get a new log of the odds prediction without some sort of transformation. When we use gradient boost for classification, the most common transformation is the following formula. The numerator is the sum of all the residuals in the leaf, and the denominator is the sum of the previously predicted probabilities for each residual times one minus the same predicted probability. Note, the derivation of this formula is quite technical, so I'm saving it for part four of this series when we get into the nitty gritty details of gradient boost for classification. So for now, let's just use the formula to calculate the output value for this leaf. Since there's only one residual in this leaf, we can ignore these summation signs for now. So we plug in the residual from the leaf, and since we are building the first tree, the previous probability refers to the probability from the initial leaf. So we plug that in, do the math, and we end up with negative 3.3 as the new output value for this leaf. Now we need to calculate the output value for this leaf. Since we have two residuals in the leaf, we'll add them together in the numerator. And in the denominator, we just add up the previous probability times one minus the previous probability for each residual. So we plug in the previous probability for each residual. Note, for now, the previous probabilities are the same for all of the residuals, but this will change when we build the next tree. Now do the math. And the output value for this leaf is negative one. Now let's determine the output value for this leaf. We plug the residuals into the formula and the previous probabilities and do the math. And the output value for this leaf is 1.4. Hooray! We've calculated the output values for all three leaves in the tree. Now we are ready to update our predictions by combining the initial leaf with the new tree. Note, just like before, the new tree is scaled by a learning rate. This example uses a relatively large learning rate for illustrative purposes. However, 0.1 is more common. Now let's calculate the log of the odds prediction for this person. The log of the odds prediction is the previous prediction, 0.7, plus the output value from the tree scaled by the learning rate, 0.8 times 1.4 and the new log of the odds prediction equals 1.8. Now we can convert the new log odds prediction into a probability, and the new predicted probability equals 
So we are taking a small step in the right direction since this person loves troll too. We save the new predicted probability here. Now we calculate the new log of the odds prediction for the second person. The log of the odds prediction is the previous prediction, 0.7, plus the output value from the tree scaled by the learning rate, 0.8 times negative 1, which gives us negative 0.1 for the new prediction. Now we can convert the log of the odds prediction into a probability and save the new predicted probability, 0.5, here. Note, this new predicted probability is worse than before, and this is one reason why we built a lot of trees, and not just one. Then we calculate the predicted probabilities for the remaining people. And now, just like before, we calculate the new residuals. And just like before, Residuals are the difference between the observed and predicted probabilities. And just like before, we can plot the observed probabilities on a graph. However, now everyone has a different predicted probability. So, to calculate the residual for the first person, we plot the predicted probability, and the residual is the difference between the observed and predicted probabilities and we save that value here. Now we calculate the residual for the second person. We plot the predicted probability, and the residual is the difference. And we save that value here. And then we just do the same thing for all the remaining people. Bam! Now that we have the residuals, we can build a new tree and then we need to calculate the output values for each leaf. Let's start with this leaf. Note, only the second person goes to this leaf. So we plug in the residual into the formula for the output values. Then we plug in the last predicted probability. Do the math, and the output value for this leaf is 2. Now let's calculate the output value for this leaf. Note, only the third person goes to this leaf. So we plug the residual into the formula for the output values. Then we plug in the last predicted probability. Do the math, and the output value for this leaf is negative 2. Lastly, let's calculate the output value for this leaf. Note, a bunch of people go to this leaf. So we plug the residuals into the formula for the output values, and we plug in the predicted probability for each individual in the leaf. Now do the math, and the output value for this leaf is 0.6. Bam! Now that we've calculated all of the output values for this tree, we can combine it with everything else we've done so far. We started with just a leaf, which made one prediction for every individual. Then we built a tree based on the residuals, the difference between the observed values and the single value predicted by the leaf. Then we calculated the output values for each leaf, and we scaled it with a learning rate. Then we built another tree based on the new residuals, the difference between the observed values and the values predicted by the leaf and the first tree. Then we calculated the output values for each leaf. And we scaled this new tree with the learning rate as well. This process repeats until we have made the maximum number of trees specified, or the residuals get super small. Double BAM! Now, for the sake of keeping the example relatively simple, imagine that we configured Gradient Boost to just make these two trees. And we needed to classify a new person as someone who loves Troll 2 or does not love Troll 2. The prediction starts with the leaf. Then we run the data down the first tree. Beep boop boop beep boop. 
and we add the scaled output value. Then we run the data down the second tree. Beep, boop, boop, beep, boop. And then we add the scaled output value. Now we just do the math and get 2.3 as the log of the odds prediction that this person loves Troll 2. Now we need to convert this log of the odds into a probability. So we plug the log of the odds into the logistic function. Do the math. And the predicted probability that this individual will love Troll 2 is 0 0.9. Since we are using 0 0.5 as our threshold for deciding how to classify people, and 0 0.9 is greater than 0 0.5, we will classify this person as someone who loves Troll 2. Triple BAM! Note, before we go, I want to remind you that Gradient Boost usually uses trees with between 8 and 32 leaves. We use small trees in this stat quest because our training data set was super small. Also, be sure to watch part 4 of this exciting series on Gradient Boost. Next time we'll dive deep into the math of how Gradient Boost is used for classification. We'll derive the equation used to update the leaves, and that will make you feel totally awesome. Mega Bam! Hooray! We've made it to the end of another exciting stat quest. If you like this stat quest and want to see more, please subscribe. And if you want to support stat quest, well, consider buying one or two of my original songs or buying a t-shirt or a hoodie. The links to do this are in the description below. Alright, until next time, quest on!